you know, I was strolling the internet and happened to see that the young rapper that did that Nay Nay song had got himself in some deep trouble. Silento. That's his name. I remember everybody and their mama was dancing to that song, man. I thought the Harlem Shake and the Dougie was big, but the Watch Me Whip Nay Nay dance took the world by storm. I'm talking everybody was doing that dance. I seen Hillary Clinton, Ellen, they was doing the dance, Steph Curry and his little daughter. They went viral, Chris Brown. You know, our family members in the family was doing it, nieces, nephews, aunts, uncles, grandmas. Everybody was doing this dance. It was a global sensation. People all, I'm talking about people all over the world was doing this song. Britain, China, Australia, everybody was making a video to this song. But see, here's the thing I want to know. How does a kid with a net worth of $5 million just lose it all? I don't know, man. For one, probably, you know, being young, the song blew up so fast overnight, he didn't get a chance to really study the music business. So he had to trust a lot of people with his money and career. And another thing probably is the mental health in the black community is a serious issue, y'all. This is a pretty deep story. Let's get into his story right now. Silento's real name is Richard Lamar Ricky Hawk, and he was born January 22nd, 1998 in Stone Mountain, Georgia. Now, he was actually raised by his mother, grandmother, and aunt after his parents' divorce. And right from the start, he said he was born with drugs in his system from marijuana, cocaine, pills, heroin. All of that was all in his system from birth. Now, growing up, he was the only male in the household with seven women, but the one he was mostly attached to was his grandmother, his grandma. Now, he loved his grandma, and she took good care of him, and she was the one that told him he had a special talent. And he also loved music. And he always had dreams of performing in front of millions of people. And some of his musical influences were Usher, Sierra, Mariah Carey, Justin Bieber, Robin Thicke, the rapper Future, and Michael Jackson and so on. That's crazy, man. Michael Jackson is still today's up and coming artist, favorite artist. But see, look, overall, his early childhood was very rough, but what people don't know is he also had some mental issues going on coming from the environment he came from. He's seen a lot growing up. He was diagnosed with a bipolar disorder, depression and anxiety, and he was given sleeping pills plus ADHD pills, even though he was never officially diagnosed with ADHD. And he also said he saw his family members struggle with mental health as well. And he witnessed family members talking to walls, fighting and trying to kill each other. Now, years later, around the age of 13 years old, his grandmother died. She passed and his mother was having some issues of her own. So that's when he had to move in with his aunt who was really well off and she was doing good for herself. Now, when he got with his aunt, he had to go to a new school and kids would pick on him and bully him, which led to him fighting and getting into a lot of trouble. And he ended up in juvenile detention. Now, his aunt, like I said, right, she was financially stable because she was a pharmaceutical rep and she was trying to keep him focused and wanted him to follow in her footsteps but you know he had other plans now by the time he hit the eighth grade he decided he wanted to do music because at the time in atlanta a lot of young kids were either rapping or selling drugs and 
he didn't want to sell drugs. He wanted to be a role model for the kids. So he made a choice to rap and he wanted to rap without using curse words, just doing positive music. Plus, you know, a couple of his friends that he went to school with were already signed to a label, which made him believe he could get a deal himself. So that's when him and his friends formed a rap group called YSK, which stood for Young Swag Kids. And they ended up doing a song like a positive rap song about getting good grades in school with a producer named Bolo. But see, by the time he got in high school, right, he left that group YSK and went solo. And that's when he started calling himself Silento, which means less talk and more action. And he was already well known in the school for always rapping, singing and coming up with courses and everything, dancing. And everybody knew he wanted to be a big star. And he would perform at birthday parties, school events, talent shows and everything. I think he did the uh, T.I.'s Grand Hustle talent show too. And around that time, there were a lot of popular dances out like Drop That Nene -Nay by the group We Are The Tunes, Whip by the group Famous To Most, Stanky Leg by the GS Boys, uh, Soldier Boy had a song, Superman Crank That, a bunch of other dance songs too. So look, one day, he just decided to basically just put all those songs together and make up his own dance song. And he called it, Watch Me Whip Nay Nay. And he first came up with the idea in his bathroom banging on the sink, just making the beat on the sink. Because at the time, like I said, he was living at his aunt's house in the basement. Then he started doing a song and the dance in the school. And everybody loved it. Then he put a 15 second clip on Instagram to see what kind of feedback he would get. And at that time, he still didn't have a beat to it yet. It was just an acapella. And next thing you know, he got a bunch of comments. And a lot of girls was commenting and tagging other people. That's when he went back to the producer, Bolo, who he met when he was with the group uh, YSK. He got back with Bolo and he kept asking him to make a beat for that song. But when Bolo, the producer, he heard it, he really didn't, he didn't think the song was all that. And then finally, after begging for months to record the song, producer Bolo finally made a, a simple beat and recorded the song for him around Christmas time. And he gave it to him as a Christmas gift. It's like a Christmas gift for recording that song to him because he kept begging for months. And once Salento uploaded it to the musical platform called SoundCloud, within the first day, it went 1,000 plays. The next day, it was at 4,000 plays. A few days later, it was at millions of plays. Wow. Now, now, once the song went viral on the internet, that's when it was a bidding war for every record label in the world was trying to sign him. But he ended up choosing Capitol Records, and they signed him to a, a four-album record deal. And he went to Capitol Records because at the time, a lot of his favorite artists were on Capitol Records, like the Migos, uh, Little Yachty, Katy Perry, Mary J. Blige, Neo, and many more. And on May 5th, 2015, Watch Me Nene was released officially with a video and was an instant hit and became bigger, reaching number three on the Billboard Hot 100, spending 51 weeks on the charts. That song spent the whole year on the charts and today it has over 1.8 billion views on youtube wow told you man people love that song everybody was dancing to that song i seen michael strahan kelly ripper jennifer lopez everybody loved that song that same year he won a soul train music award for best dance performance and he was nominated for a Teen Choice Award and an MTV Video Music Award. Overall, that song went six times platinum. That's crazy, man. That was a big song. And he inspired, look, he inspired other songs at that time too, like Hit the Quan and Juju on the Beat. 
But anyway, now one thing I do respect about Silento's aunt, who he was living with at the time, is she made sure he stayed in school and she protected his money until he turned 18 years old and graduated. Now, after finishing school, that's when he started touring all over the world because now he was 18. And the song Whip Nene was still big. And by him being young and famous with a bunch of money, you know, he got in a little trouble. In 2017, he was stuck and travel banned from leaving the Middle East due to a business dispute with a local promoter who claimed he skipped out on two scheduled shows. Now, the crazy part is the judge made him surrender his passport and order him to pay $85,000 to the local promoter or he couldn't leave the country. That's scary, man. I bet that was scary. You imagine you in another country and you was told not to leave. You couldn't leave. That's crazy. But you know, after the lawyers negotiated, claiming it was the promoter who didn't follow through with his requirements for him to do a show, like he didn't pay for his hotel, his flight, or per diem. So Silento was clear to go in the next 48 hours. Plus, you know, the case was really dismissed because Silento was 19 years old and that age is considered a minor in the Middle Eastern country. Now, on August 3rd, 2018, he released his debut album titled Fresh Out of High School. And the reason why this album came out years later after the Watch Me Whip Nene single back in 2015 is because, like I said earlier, he wanted to finish and graduate school, which is good, man. I'm glad he did that, man. And months later, he released Fresh Out of High School Part 2. Now, after the success, Silento said his family turned on him and became jealous. Plus, he was a little out of control and wilding out too. And that's when his management team, they tried to help him because they knew all the demons he was facing. I mean, he basically became an overnight celebrity with that song. The money, the fame came so fast and they saw him going down the wrong path. That's when they booked him to do an interview on the Emmy Award winning daytime talk show called Doctors. And they had a board certified clinical psychologist, Judy Ho, talk to him and discuss his rough early childhood, his family, and his lifelong struggle with depression. Now, on that show, Silento told him that he's been fighting demons his whole life. And even though his song, Watch Me Nene, blew up, almost instantly overnight sadly his mental state didn't improve he said depression doesn't leave you when you become famous it just adds more pressure and he doesn't know if he can truly be happy or if the demons will ever go away and look they did do a psychological evaluation on him and everything which was like a four or five day process but after the show he never did any of the follow-up sessions. They scheduled for him. He never, he never followed up. After that, you know, money started slowing down. It started slowing down because of the pandemic. And his manager became worried. Especially when he started missing major TV appearances. Because see, before the pandemic, he was all over the country making a lot of money. But when everything shut down, his mental health was in a bad state, leading him to attempt suicide from his bipolar disorder. Wow. Now, after that, he started getting into more trouble. Like on August 28th, 2020, he was arrested in Orange County, California, following a domestic disturbance and was charged with inflicting corporal punishment on a spouse or cohabitant. But then check this out, right? The next following day, he was arrested again. This time in Valley Village, Los Angeles, after walking into a random house with a hatchet. They say he was swinging a hatchet looking for his girlfriend. Now, they say he entered a stranger's residence while searching for his girlfriend. 
and ended up being arrested and charged with two counts of assault with a deadly weapon. That's crazy, man. They say the, the homeowners were there with their children when he came in the house. He said the kids were screaming for help and everything during the whole altercation. And look, they say the homeowners had to pull a gun on him, which stopped him from attacking them. And they ended up tackling him to the ground. That's when one of his friends pulled up and told Silento that he was at the wrong house. And that's when both of them left before police arrived. But Silento was later arrested a block away from the house. Then he missed his court hearing in September that year, 2020, for the case. And a bench warrant was issued for his arrest. That whole the whole situation had him facing six years in prison. Then, on October 23rd, 2020, he was arrested again around 3 a.m. in the morning after coming from the club because the cop had spotted him driving his BMW SUV at a high rate of speed of 143 miles per hour on Interstate 85. Interstate 85 is 65 miles per hour zone. Now check this right, when the cop got behind him, he said Silento sped up, then slowed down, then changed lanes and was swerving around slower vehicles before pulling off in the area. Now after pulling him over, the cop asked him why he was driving at dangerous speeds and Silento told him that it was because people was following him everywhere he went. And his celebrity status justified his driving. He said if there's like 10 cars following him, he can do 143 miles per hour because he's not a regular person. And he told the cop he can go look on his computer. It would tell him that. Wow. But you know, the cops, they weren't even trying to hear what he was talking about, man. They charged him with uh, exceeding maximum speed limits driving on roadways lane for traffic reckless driving and stopping standing or parking in a prohibited space now after that arrest silento felt he was racially profiled and he accused the cops of spitting on him and being racist and he also told the media that the government satellites have been following his every move and donald trump sends him messages every day begging him to help with his re-election efforts wow it's crazy man and i don't know but it could be true because trump did help a lot of rappers <laughs> he helped kodak black and lil wayne get out of jail i don't know but anyway now on february 1st 2021 silento was arrested and charged with murder in the shooting death of his cousin Frederick Rooks. Now, the story goes back on January 21st, 2021 in Panthersville, Georgia, which is about 10 miles southeast of downtown Atlanta, police received a call about shots being fired around 3 a.m. in the morning. And when they arrived, they found 34-year-old Frederick Rooks laid out in the middle of the street with multiple gunshot wounds to his face and his legs bleeding heavily plus they found eight shell casings nearby and he was pronounced dead at the scene now police really didn't have any info or suspects until they got the videos from multiple residents security cameras and off the ring door footage which showed several cars fleeing the scene at high speeds and the footage captured at least one gunshot. They later identified Silento as the gunman and it was revealed that 34-year-old Frederick Rooks was his cousin. And days later, they arrested Silento and a grand jury charged him with four felonies including one count of malice murder and one count of felony murder. He was also charged with aggravated assault and gun possession during the commission of a felony. Now, the crazy part is the police didn't provide details about how investigators identified Silento as the suspect 
And another thing is, nobody knows his motive for the shooting. They don't know why he did it. Now, after the incident, Salento's management team tried to get the courts to release him on a $25,000 bond, claiming he's not an extraordinary bail risk and will not jeopardize the safety of the community. They want him in a secure mental health facility under the court's supervision where he can be properly treated. And Salento said he won't go on a run if he's granted bond and added that it's unconstitutional if he isn't allowed to post bond. But the judge denied his bail request because he felt Silento's mental health issues and documented history of not taking his prescribed medication made him a risk to the community. Plus, he had left a mental health facility in California before. And his publicist put out a statement saying she has been in contact with Silento's family. And their thing right now is just they're asking the world to uplift their family in prayer. They also said Salento needs a psychiatric evaluation ASAP and should be watched closely. And they don't think he would take his life behind bars, but anything is possible, they admitted. And they want to make sure the jail is taking proper precautions. They feel it's impossible to improve a person's mental health while isolating them alone in a jail cell. Man, that's sad, man. It's crazy now. He's supposed to be going to court pretty soon, so we shall see his outcome. So y'all, y'all pray for this young man because mental health, man, is a serious issue in the black community, y'all. I'm telling y'all, I got to do a whole show on that, man. Because, you know, now that I'm older, man, I think about how many people have been traumatized and have PTSD and don't even know it. From seeing their loved ones killed, gunshots every day, murders, killings, and haven't been treated. Like the military guys, they come here with that.